Hello everybody, Todd here, All Things Archery and Shooting, and today we're going to be doing um, part two of my Aim Small, Hit Small. I did a series on this about, I don't know, three, four months ago. Um, I shot different, different things to progress to getting smaller and smaller. Um, I, shot, I shot everything from a piece of fruit all the way down to a quarter at the end. So if you haven't seen that video, it's on my YouTube channel, check it out. This is going to be kind of more in-depth of that program. It's going to be Aim Small, Hit Small, part two which is going, going to go more into the mechanics of how I shoot my bow and how I can maintain an accuracy and what I've done to get to that accuracy level. I actually don't think I'm anything that great, but a lot of people have, have texted me and uh, messaged me on, on on YouTube and over at the our local range here where I shoot at, they all say that I shoot extremely well and they all want to know how I do it. I'm really, I don't know how I do it, I just do what I do. But I am going to try to explain it here for you because a lot of people have asked me to go over my shooting style because it's kind of a unique shooting style. It's kind of a hybrid system between a gap shooting and snap shooting. So we'll get that further. But first, I'm going to talk about the equipment we're using today. Um, it's kind of a, I don't know, muggy day out here in Florida. Not really muggy, but like a cloudy day, I guess you'd call it. It's The cold weather's starting to come in, which is good. It means the deer are moving out, too. I was in my deer stand this morning and saw four good-looking does and a nice buck. But he was just out of my 40 yard range with my bow so but anyway so we're gonna go over the gear I'm doing what I'm shooting here today is gonna be the bear stag hunter this is a bow I did a review on not too long ago I'm not going too much into this bow you can go back and check out the video on it base is a 58 inch bow right at 48 pounds at my draw length um, it's gonna be shooting a uh, feather rest on it and it's got a this is a mid 1970s bow but like I said if you want to learn more about this bow I did a full review on it long ago you find it on my YouTube channel but I want to talk about the string that I'm using. The string here that I got, I got it from a one of my YouTube subscribers. Um, his name is Handy, so Handy, shout out to you. Thank you for the string. It is a Flemish Twist B55 Dacron string. It comes with puff balls in it. Okay, uh, string's very well made. It's got like it's like a, a olive green and like a light light cream color or light brown color uh, twisted together. Uh, the puffs got gray and brown in them and First I'm gonna talk what I don't like about the string then I'll tell you what I do like about the string because Handy said you want me to be brutally honest with you in the string So I'm gonna do that. So you asked for it, so here it comes A couple things the string I don't like okay first off. I don't like the serving size on it It's too small six inches is too small if you watch my videos before you know I always complain about a six inch serving I prefer a nine inch serving why do I like a nine inch serving? I'll tell you because when you shoot your bow that serving there when it hits your arm it's going to hit between your string and your serving when it hits your arm guard and if that's going to cause that to wear and start sliding down pulling apart so if you use the longer serving it solves that problem okay also gives it more grab on the string all right secondly is your uh, loops ends on your string these these were actually backwards and they're too small what i mean by that is you sent it marked his top loop which gray appreciates so i put the top loop on okay on that thing, but the only problem with the, with the top loop was it doesn't work that way when you string it up. When I string it up with the top loop, like you said it was, the serving was flip-flopped and I had no place to put my knock that was down here. So I had to flip the string around and put the small end on my bottom of my bow and the big end, I mean, the, sorry, the small end on the top of my bow and the big end on the bottom of my bow. Here, let me show you what I mean. If you look right there, see that? That is supposed to be the top loop of the string. All right, which is that's on the bottom because it again when I did the other way the serving didn't line up with the sight window and here is the other loop in all right there you go now it doesn't bother me a well because this doesn't make a difference to me it's still strung up just fine but it just it is kind of kind of against the norm usually they want the um, small end down here on the bottom and the big loop on the top now let's go talk about the loop so the big loop you made it's actually too small for it for these bows. It probably could be good on a long bow, but on a recurve, it doesn't work. When I make string, which I do make strings for my bows, is the way I do it is I find the taper on the bow here, okay, and then I come right before the taper starts to get you know, more even, right about there, okay, and that's when I'll measure across there, and that's how big I'll make my top loop. So when I slide my top loop on, it stops there, and I slide to make it tie a little bit better, so when the bow's unstrung, it works as a, as a as a bow keeper. And also, when you put your bowstring on, I don't flop around and fall around on you. And my you, the small end, I always make it. I take the where the knock ends at, and I go just past the knock end, maybe half an inch or three quarters of an inch, and that's where I make the width of my of my small end string. Okay. Um, 
Now that's what I don't like about Shannon. What I like about the strings a lot, it's a, I like the color style. It's really nice. It's like old school. Makes it look like it for an old school bow. It fits really well. It's not them fancy fluorescent neon colors are coming out with now. It's old school stuff. I love the serving material. I don't like the serving leaf. I love the serving material. I'm not sure what that is, but I like to get some of that because that is some really good, like really strong. It reminds me of the old bear serving material that was made out of cloth instead of that nylon stuff. That new nylon serving material they got, except for maybe Halo, everything else out there, it doesn't last at all. It, it comes apart, it bends, it flattens out. I love the old bear um, cloth serving type material it used. That's what I think what this is, but it's really nice. I like that a lot. Don't think I'd have picked blue for it, but hey, that's just me. I probably would have maybe picked a gray or with like a or a black or something, because really blue doesn't really go with nothing on the string, but that's fine too. Um, also, I like your Flemish twist. They're, both sides are even, which is nice. They come down on both sides, come down just where they need to be at. Okay, your tag ends aren't flopping around. They've been they've been melted down and chopped off, which is really nice. Okay. Your twists and your string are all even and uniform, which is good. And I love your puff balls, okay? Puff balls are not really good touch there, okay? So that's handy string. Y'all want a string here? I'm not sure what he sells these for. Just give him a holler. You can find information on my YouTube channel or you can search just search handy on YouTube and you'll find it. Okay? So thanks, Handy. We're gonna try this ring out now. I'm also gonna I'll be shooting this bow across the chronograph again. I know I've done this in my review. I'm only doing most because I want to test the speed of this string you sent me. I think last time I reviewed the footage, I think I shot around 178 feet per second with a Dacron string with this bow. So we're going to shoot it across this chronograph and see what handy string does, all right? Arrows, I'm doing, let's talk about the arrows I'm using. These arrows, I, just, I built these arrows for this bow, okay? And these are a 450 spine arrow, okay? 450 spine. They are 30 and 3 eighths of an inch long. They have a 150 grain copper insert in the front and they have a 100 grain tip on them okay that gives me 250 grains up front so my FOC on this bow is quite you can see there it's about 18 19 percent which is really good okay um, uses four inch feather fletchings five inch arrow wrap and use these speed knocks from um, that I get from um, East, um, East uh, not Eastman sorry redo that sorry about that tongue tie there these are boning speed knocks for carbon arrow shafts. Uh, the shaft inside diameter is 0 .620, all right? Um, I buy these shafts, they, uh, the, the cover on the shaft's not painted, it's not dipped. It's like a, it's a wrap yourself, it's like a, I don't know, it's like something shrunk on it, it's like a multi vinyl type wrap, so it holds up really well. And there's no seam along the arrow shaft or anything like that. These are really good, I mean, they're wrapped around a good carbon shaft. So I get these from Amazon, they're a Chinese arrow, you have to wait for these. Sometimes you can find them quickly through Prime, but most of the time you have to get them from China, you got to wait you know, four or five weeks for them. But I pay $39 for them shipped, and they are really good arrows. I mean, I've tried other you know, name brands, I won't go to the different name brands, but you know the ones that are out there. And they're always, for a half a dozen, they want $100 for half a dozen. Here I get a dozen shafts for $39, and I build the arrows myself. So. Total weight of this arrow is 480 grains. Again, I built this arrow specifically for this bow, and this arrow has been tuned for this bow. That brings me to my another point I want to make. If you're going to shoot accurate with a bow, you need you need a good thing. You need a good bow. You need a good string. You need good arrow. But most importantly, you have to have your arrows tuned to your bow. Okay. What do I mean by tuning my arrows to my bow? That means I take my arrows and I spend a lot of time with them, getting them to. I don't paper tune, I bear shaft tune. And I, and I, bear, I start at five yards until I get back to 30 yards bear shaft where I'm shooting the same point aim. Then I know my arrows are tuned. I can sometimes, I'll spend three, four hours tuning a set of arrows. But once I get them tuned though, that's how I stick with that, that size arrow, that size weight, everything with that arrow from then on. And you have to tune your arrows to your bow. These bows are gonna shoot an arrow differently. These arrows will shoot fine in other bows. As you see in other videos, I just grab a, bunch of arrows off my bench and I go shoot them and I'll shoot three three and a half inch groups with them 20 yards all day long but those are untuned arrows now if I get a tuned set of arrows I can shoot two inch groups all day long at 20 yards and if you look at my last video I did was with a black hunter bow that was um, aim aim small hit small that was with tuned arrows with a black hunter bow and I was able to shoot from a piece of fruit that big around down to a quarter at 20 yards so that's very important. You must tune your arrows to your bow. Your bow is nothing but a launch pad. Your arrow is the main thing for your shooting. Don't get a mixed up. Oh, I gotta have this high speed expensive bow. No, this is not an expensive bow. I paid less than $50 for this bow. 
It's a mid-1970s vintage bear bow. But this bow you're going to see is going to shoot is just like a just like a, a tack driving dart, okay? It's, the bow is, you have to have an arrow to fit the bow. The arrow is the main thing that makes you shoot accurately. And the second thing that makes you shoot accurately is a consistent, repeatable anchor point and stance. And I can't stress that a month, uh, enough, okay? I'm a bow hunter, so I don't get into all this Olympic type shooting with all these crazy gizmos hanging off my bow and all these bars and counterweights and release days, all that junk. I mean, that's great for them. They want to do that. That makes that the only way they can shoot accurate. Hey, they need to practice more, but I mean, that might piss off a few of my of my Olympic shooters or my target shooters. But I mean, granted, I could, I could I've shot against target Olympic shooters at my at my local range, and a lot of them are very good. But I can hold my own with most of them, though, and they're really amazed. I come up there with a freaking hunting setup like this, and they got this $2,000 recurve set up for Olympic archery, and I'm shooting just as good as they are, 20 yards and stuff. So, and the reason I do this because that main thing, I have a consistent stance and I have a consistent anchor, and I use a three-point anchor system, not a single point. Another important feature. Now you're asking, what's a three-point anchor system? Okay. A three-point anchor system is what it sounds like. It's three anchor points on my face that I come with. The first one is going to be my forefinger, which I use a tap. I shoot three under. It's going to be my first forefinger, my first finger here, in the corner of my lip and mouth. And I touch my, I touch a tooth in there, which is um, the same tooth I touch every time, okay? Second anchor point is going to be the knuckle of my thumb. That locks in back here to my, there's a, the divot right underneath my cheekbone that I lock it into, okay? And my third anchor point is through my ring finger. It, it hits down here on my um, on my chin. It's a dimple on my chin. So I got all three of these anchor points at all times. And, okay, and when I shoot, I just release, I just let my fingers relax and go forward, but I leave my anchor point from my knuckle into my chin, okay? I also shoot what's called a um, uh, uh, shoulder width stance, means I I shoot like an L stance, so I'm shooting with my, I'll show you, we'll get a better picture in a minute, but I shoot with my offside foot that I'm hunting with, that I'm holding the bow with, that foot is pointing to the target, the other foot is turned slightly to the right, all right, and I'm about shorter width apart. That gives me good stability, I can use the same stance in my tree stand or in my ground blind. And I do practice that on my ground blind, sitting down, and I do the same thing, I still point my foot the right way, and twist the other, just like I do normally, okay? Another thing is, you got to shoot a lot. When I say shoot a lot, you have to shoot a lot. I shoot between, at a minimum, 100 to as much as 150 to 200 arrows a day. And I mean, I do that consistently every day, okay? I do that consistently. I'm constantly shooting, okay? You have to constantly shoot to become accurate and be, and that builds muscle memory up. It builds up everything that you can become a, an accurate shooter. Great shooters of the past, like Fred Bear, Howard Hill, um, Brian Ferguson. If you watch any of their books or read any of their videos, watch any of their videos, read any of their books, because I've read them all and I've watched them all, those guys shoot religiously four or five hundred arrows a day. It's crazy what those guys shoot, but that's how good they are, okay? But I think 150 to 200 arrows a day is about what you need to shoot accurately. If you're not doing that, you're not doing enough, I'm sorry to say. You're just going to be a subpar shooter. You've got to shoot 150, but you say, to 200. Well, Todd took a lot of time. Well, it does take a time. I could spend probably an hour, hour and a half a day out shooting. So you you need to make that time aside, especially you want to get accurate with a bow, okay? A lot of people can't do that, so then I understand that. But just remember, what's gonna make you accurate at every single time is consistency and a lot of shooting, a lot of practice, all right? Another thing, the way my system is, is when I shoot my bow, is I lock my I lock my arrow in there and I shoot what's called a, high, I call it a hybrid system. It's kind of a gap system plus a snapshot system. What that mean by that? is I already know, I already set my gap on my bow originally. When I barrels to the next thing I do is I set the gap shooting on my bow at different distances, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, et cetera, all the way down to the 40 yards, which is about my maximum distance of 40 yards. At 40 yards, I can shoot five inches pretty much all day long. If I'm, on a really good day, I can do four inches, okay? Uh, 30 yards, I shoot between three and four inches, okay? 20 yards, I can shoot two inches to three inches all day long, no problem, okay? And reason being that's because a few things we talked about: tuned arrows, proper anchor, proper stance, and consistency of shooting a lot of arrows. But my system is kind of a—I couldn't find no system work for me. Gap shooting I thought was just too slow. String walking was ridiculous. I don't know who 
Here come a string walk down. That's just got to be the slowest thing in the world to shoot. If you're a hunter, that's completely useless, okay? I've never seen a deer stand there for more than three or four seconds. And it takes you just that much time to figure out your your uh, your range and then to move your finger down your string to get the right distance. It's, that's ridiculous. And plus, when you're shooting that further down the string, it throws off. I don't care what one says. A lot of you say, oh, that's way you go. No, you, further you come down your string on your bow, it puts, you pull in the bow, that pulls the bow off its natural arc of, of um, which is the further down it pulls the bow, it means you're pulling more on the top end than you are the bottom end. So your arrow is going to change. The way your arrow shoots is going to change. That completely throws out consistently altogether. I can never understand why string wires come four, five, six inches down and down come to the string to shoot. It just doesn't make sense to me because it throws the whole geometry of the bow off. The bow is not designed to shoot like that. They want to shoot like that to get one of those weird Japanese bows. Got that really short bottle in that really tall top limb. Okay, so I don't know why string walk is even a thing. I mean, I I tried it and I could not get. It was just terrible. Slow. It wasn't very accurate. I didn't like it at all. Okay. Now gap shooting, I do like. Gap shooting is um, basically your. You're setting your gap using the point of your arrow to set your your distance. So when your point hits a certain distance from the target, whether it be 10, 12, 14 inches, whatever, that you know your your range is. Okay, so that's great for ranging. But I like mine for snap shooting, so I do a gap and a snap shooting. I also shoot with both eyes open. What I mean by both eyes, both my eyes open. I have my dominant eye focused on a spot in that target, laser like zeroed in on whether it's a tear in the target, a hole in the target, whatever. That's where, my, that's where my dominant eye is focused. My non-dominant eye, which is also open, but it's looking at the tip of my arrow, okay? And what I'm doing with that is as I'm bringing the arrow up, when I'm shooting my group, and I'm bringing the arrow up, my dom, non-dominant eye is focusing on that on that tip there, and as I'm coming, I'm hitting where my gap position could be, it'll be eight, 10, 12, whatever inches, that's where my gap is. That's when I, and then that's when I release. And I'm always, I never, take my Don nominated eye off that point of that target I'm shooting. That's when I release to let the arrow go, okay? And you have to practice that because a lot of people don't shoot with two eyes open. They're handicapping themselves. You've got to train your body to shoot both eyes open. I learned how to shoot two eyes open military. They taught us to shoot um, rifles that way and and you have to really train your body and mind to do that, okay? You have to, you don't, once you master shooting two eyes, you'll shoot 10 times better, I promise you, okay? All right, so that's the description of my bow shooting in a nutshell. I'm gonna to try to give you an idea what my anchor point looks like, all right? Arrow, on the thing, tap, start here, slide up, to it's the bottom of the knock, bottom of the knock, okay? Three finger, I keep this pinky finger out of the way, okay? Tap the bow, maybe 30 degree angle, okay? I slowly pull, start low, start pulling back. I hit one, two, three, okay? One, two, three, there's my anchor, okay? And then I'm locked in, then I let it go. Now when I let go, I don't just go like this. Okay, I just release my hands, boom. And I try to leave that knuckle of my thumb locked into the bottom of my jawbone, okay? Again, consistency. Back muscles, my arm is, my elbow's always straight up, never down like this, because you'll feel that when you're shooting down, you put your elbow up, you'll feel that back muscle tighten. And you wanna feel that, especially that last anchor shot, you want to feel that back muscle tighten. You got to work on your grip and work on your anchor point and your stance. Okay. Speaking of stances, I'm going to show you my stance. Watch my feet, okay? Okay, if I'm shooting, I'm right handed, I'm shooting, okay? My left foot just at a my, my right foot's at a slight angle. My left foot, I turn it, and it's pointing directly to the target I'm shooting at. And I'm about shoulder width apart. I got a little bit of bend in my knees there, and I have a little bit of bend to my knees. Okay. But look at that left foot. That left foot is pointed. You cut my grass, I guess. The left foot's pointed to my target where I'm shooting at. Okay. My right foot is slightly off, about shoulder width apart, and I bend these just a little bit. A little bit of flex in the knees there, not a lot. Okay. A little bit of flex of the knees, okay? And then when you pull your bow back, keep your knees bent, don't lock your knees, and shoot. That's what my that's what my foot stance is gonna be. Alright. Now let's put all this to practice, okay? We're gonna go ahead and shoot that target there. Okay. 
we're going to shoot this target right here. That right there is a three inch circle. And we're going to move back to 20 yards and shoot that, okay? Let's see what we can do. All right. All right, as you can see, that's a 20 yard group all in the circle. That's a two inch diameter circle there, red circle on that target. And they all made it in there at 20 yards. Okay. Okay. All right, here is my 20 yard group. All right, as you can see, all three of these arrows are in that two inch bullseye. So I'm at two inches at 20 yards, okay? Okay, we're gonna move back to um, 30 yards now and try the same shoot at 20, 30 yards, here we go. Okay, that's my 30 yard shot. I got one in the bullseye, one in the nine, and one in the eight. About a three and a half inch group maybe. That's a pretty respectable group for 30 yards. So I was aiming for right here, it's a little bit off. But that is, it's about what I shoot average, three and a half to four inches at 30 yards, okay? Head over to the um, buck target here. We're just shooting on it at 20 and 30 yards. Also, want to point out that this string, I, would, I went to the corner graph this string, but my battery died. I only got two shots out of this before my battery died. And both of those shots are these arrows here. One came in 178 feet per second, one came in 180 feet per second. So, average speed is about 179 feet per second with this string that Handy made, which is about the same speed as the factory string that I shot on it before. So. I do apologize. I had to realize my battery had died on me. Didn't have an extra nine ball around. So, but that was the two. That was the two readings. Okay. Let's move over to the deer target. Put some arrows on it. Okay. We're gonna shoot. This is my Delta McKenzie 3D deer target. We're gonna shoot three arrows at 20 yards and three arrows at 30 yards. Aiming for this spot here. See what we can do. Here we go. Okay. Right, as you can see, I had a one. Ah, come here. Okay, as you can uh, as you can see, I had one that went high. I knew that was going to go high because my release on my wasn't exactly right. It didn't feel right on me. That's one thing you, you know when you shoot a lot like I do. You know when you're having the perfect release and everything's supposed, works like it's supposed to. Then you know when you don't have you go ahead and run away. You know, the arrow's going to be a bad one. So, but two arrows are touching at 20 yards in the bull. This one's about 
two inches above that, two and a half inches above that in the high nine, okay? But I knew this was gonna be a high arrow because of the way my release was. It goes back to being consistent. You have to be very consistent with your release, your anchor, everything. If any one of those things are off, your stance, your anchor, your release, if any of that is off, your arrow's gonna go a different spot, okay? That was a good example of that. Now let's move to 30 yards, do the same thing, three arrows. Again, that's a typical three and a half inch group at 30 yards. Three and a half from here to here, I'd say. It's about typical what I shoot at 30 yards. It's a little to the left. Same thing, I always shoot a little to the left at 30. And at 40, I shoot a little bit more to the left. So when I'm at 30 or 40 yards, I, sometimes I'll bring my point of aim over to here instead of here, just get it more centered up. But for some reason, at 30 and 40, no matter which bow I shoot, I always seem to pull it left for some reason. But it's easy fix. I know, I know between 30 and 40 yards, Instead of being point on, you bring it over maybe an inch and a half or two inches over to the right of what I'm targeting. So that's three, that's a three and a half inch group, 30 yards. So okay, I'm gonna get some close-up shots of the way I shoot. You can see my anchor on my face, my release, and everything else. Let's do that now. Okay, we're gonna do it. My anchor shot and close to my face. I hope I got my camera set up right, but you can see how I shoot. Watch my my three-point anchor and watch my release, okay? Again, start here, slide up, hit, pull back. Like that. One more time. Pull up, pull back. See I know that that knuckle stays against my face, so I just release my hands like this. Alright, do it again. Slide up, anchor. Okay, same thing. I did, my hand did not leave my face. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna do a point on. Okay, so straight at me. Watch how I camp my bow when I shoot. Okay. Okay, this is my last group we shot. My we're on. It's the 20 yards. Walk down to the target, see how it looks. There you go. As you can see, get the focus on there. That's my 20 yard group. You can see that's my 20 yard group right there. 20 yards, all three in the bullseye, less than two inches. Yep. Okay, 20 yards, all three, but less than two inches. Let's do that head on one more time. Okay, this is my, let me do a, like a straight on shot. You can probably see a little better on my anchor point and how I release and stuff. 20 yards, we're at the 20 yard mark right now. Let's do that. First come up here, anchor. Get it going. Okay. Great. 
Okay. Okay. All right, let's go and review what we did here, okay? We'll talk about the bow first. The bow is a, a bear archery, mid 1970s stag hunter. It's a vintage bow, great recurve bow. I did a review on this bow not too long ago, as you can find on my YouTube channel here. Just scroll back to my videos, you'll find it. Um, the string came from Handy. Thank you, Handy. Great string. I appreciate it. Just fix those few minor things I told you about. And uh, you got a good product here. So anyone that's a good string, give Handy a call. There it is, okay? Um, now let's talk about what we learned today and what, about my system and stuff. And maybe some of the stuff I, I did here to help you guys out. I basically based my shooting style on four criteria, okay? Uh, the first one is... You have to have a uh, bow you're comfortable with, and you have to um, set your get your arrows tuned to the bow. And I mean, your arrows have to be tuned to the bow. All right. Very important for consistent archery is have tuned arrows for your bow. All right. Once you get tuned enough, you can be real careful. You'll start busting your arrows like this one here. So you pop the I pop the um, feather apart. All right. Second thing is you must get your stance down. Your anchor point, your release must be consistent. Use a three point anchor. And use a consistent release and a consistent stance every time. If you're shooting on the ground or you're shooting in a tree stand. If you're shooting a tree stand, the only thing that changes is you bend at the waist. You don't bend the bow down. You just bend to the waist, leave everything else the same, you'll shoot to the same point of aim, okay? Third thing is you have to get um you have to you have to, uh, sorry. The third thing is you have to shoot with both eyes open. What I mean by that is you've got to shoot with both eyes open. You can't shoot with one eye closed like most people want to. You have to shoot with your dominant eye. It's very important, and both eyes must be open. So whether you're right hand or left hand, it's irrelevant when it comes to shooting a bow or a rifle or a pistol. You have to be shoot the shoot the gun that your dominant eye shoots. Okay? What I mean by that, the figure dominant eye, make you a triangle like this. Put it on a spot out in the, out in, in the middle of nowhere. Okay? And slowly bring that, keeping that spot in the middle of that triangle. Slowly bring your hand back to your eye, that triangle, to rest on top of your dominant eye. That's your dominant eye, that is the type of bow you need to shoot. So if you're right-handed and your right eye dominant, great, right-handed bow. But if you're right-handed and your left eye dominant, you want to shoot a left-handed bow. Very important. I had a buddy of mine that's been shooting bow for a couple years now, got in traditional archery a couple years ago, not too long after I did. But he can't seem to get consistency. And he, I mean, he shoots okay. He shoots maybe 8, 10 inches at 20 yards, which is, I mean, it's decent. It's not bad. But he, he's tried everything. He's tried different kinds of shooting styles, different angles. He just cannot get it consistently to shoot a bow. So one day I was shooting with him and I said to him, I said, have you ever thought about what your dominant eye is? And he says, what do you mean? I don't know what it is. I said, yeah, you've got a dominant eye. what do you mean by dominant eye? And I showed him the trick with the triangle. He's a right-handed guy. He used it and he turns out he's left eye dominant. So what happened there, he was shooting a right-handed bow the whole time his left eye was dominant. So everything was off for him. So he ended up getting a left-handed bow and, and his groups strength dramatically and you start shooting more consistent so very important check your dominant eye and the last thing on my four points is you've got to get string time in when i mean string time i mean time behind the string you got to shoot 100 150 arrows a day consistently shoot that every day because archery is is a um it's a learned sport not something that comes natural well a few people are natural but mostly it's a learned sport and if you don't use it you'll lose it okay so you have to consistently shoot. I know that for a fact. For a while, I was shooting traditional, and I put it down for a, about a month or so and got back into it, and I was nowhere near as good as I used to be. So now I consistently shoot 100, 150 arrows a day nonstop, all right? So also, you don't, that's my fourth one. There is probably a fifth, well, let's say there's a fifth one. I mean, not really a fifth point, but something I need to put out there. The fifth point would be you have to, you cannot be shoot, you cannot be overbowed. Do not be overbowed or underbowed. What I mean by that, overbowed or underbowed. Okay, so say you're, you're a com, compound shooting guy. You come from shooting a 80 pound compound bow, 3D archery range, okay? So in your mind, you're thinking, I shoot an 80 pound compound bow all day long. I'm just going to jump into, say, a 60 pound or 65 pound recurve bow. You really can't find 80 pound recurve bows on, off the shelf without being custom made anymore. So that's the biggest mistake you can make, okay? I don't care how strong you are, if you're used to shoot 80 pound compound bow, you're never going to be able to shoot an 80 pound recurve. It's not going to happen in discussion. It won't happen. You might think you're a big brawly guy and you can do it. No, you're not going to do it. Remember the 80 pound compound bow, you're probably only holding 25, 30 pounds tops maybe because of the let off. If you're shooting a coming from compound, moving to additional archery, you need to shoot half the weight of your compound bow. What do you mean by that? So say you're shooting an 80 pound compound bow. You need to drop down to a 40-pound compound bow 
and then on top of that take five pounds off. So you want to, your first traditional bow should be a 35 pound bow. You're saying, now Ty, why is that? It's such a lightweight bow. No, the reason for that is 35 pound bow is about what you're holding on your, on your 80 pound compound bow, enable you to develop good habits of anchor, shot placement, consistency, and release. And after you get that all down, then you can move your bow weight up into five pound increase till you find your sweet spot. What I mean by your sweet spot, there's gonna be a spot in additional bow that you're gonna find in a weight range that you shoot most accurately at, okay? Anything over that, you don't shoot so well. Anything below that, you don't shoot so well. My sweet spot on bows is between 47, 48 pounds, somewhere in that range there. That's, at that range, that weight, I shoot the most consistently, most accurate with my, my additional bows. Now, it doesn't mean I can't shoot a 50 or 55 pound bow, I can, but my most accurate, most consistent is gonna be in that 47, 48 pound range. And I've been a 40 or 45 pound bow, it's still not as consistent as my 47, 48 pound bow. So you need to find your sweet spot. So start half the weight of your compound bow, take five pounds off, get your first additional bow at that weight, and then after you shoot that and get used to it, move up five pound increase till you find your sweet spot. That's what I did. Also, you need to get a training regimen down. What I mean by that, traditional archery, it's just like pitching baseball or throwing darts. You have to get a consistent system and practice with it, all right? And that way you're building muscle memory up when you're doing it, okay? I mean, by, I mean by that, find you a target like the target over there, which is a bullseye target. You want your, your center bullseye, give it a, a number, numerical value of 10. Give the next ring from the bullseye, numerical value of 9. The next ring out from 9, give it an 8. Anything else on the target, give it a 5. Maintain that, that same numerical value. You want to shoot 50 arrows a day for 30 days, starting at 10 yards, okay? And each day, track your score from those 50 arrows, okay? You'll be surprised and amazed at how much more you are, and you can see it on paper because by, by, keep it, by tracking the numerical value of your hits. You'll be surprised. You'll probably, your first day of 50 arrows a day, you're probably gonna get 20, 25 as your score. I guarantee you by the end of that 30 days, you're gonna be shooting in the upper 80s, lower 90s, okay? So, and remember your top score would be for 10 points at 50 arrows, that's okay, that's 500 points, all right? So you'll be shooting the top 85, 90% of that, that range, okay? So, which, is, which translates to probably about a 440 to 460 score, okay? Somewhere in there at, after your 30 days. So I guarantee you, your first start, you'll be shooting 20, 25% of your score, which would be about a 200, maybe 200, 225 score. And then at your end of your 10 days, you'll be up there at a 450, 475 score, point-wise, okay? Do that every day for 30 days, and after that's done, move back to 15 yards, do this, repeat the same process, move to 20, repeat the same process, or move to 25, repeat your same process, or move to 30, or how far out you wanna go, okay? It's gonna take some time, I understand that. So you gotta figure that time in two, three, or four months spent doing that, you're doing a couple things. One, you're developing muscle memory, very important. Two, you're learning to be consistent with your anchor point and your release. And three, your mind is automatically knows those distances now without you even thinking about it. It's just natural. I can walk off anywhere from my target from five yards to 40 yards, and I know exactly where my point aim's gotta be for me to hit, hit where I need to hit at. I don't even gotta think about it now. I just, I just pull the bow up, and hit, boom, release. It's there. It's automatically in my brain now from doing that. And I, and I also, when I shoot 100, 150 yards a day, I don't shoot just one distance. I range that up. I might shoot 20 arrows at 15 yards, 10 arrows at 10 yards, 30 arrows at 20 yards, I go back and forth. But I get 150 arrows a day in. And, and once you do that training regimen, it takes several months, three, four, five months to do it, you might say, this is ridiculous, I can't do this, it's getting crazy. Trust me, stick with that regimen and you'll be a better shooter at the end. Your brain will automatically know your distances, you automatically have muscle memory, and you'll be surprised how much better you can shoot. Now I can, I've shot with um, target archers, I've shot with some Olympic archers before, they got these expensive three, four, five thousand dollar bows with all these gizmos and things hanging off of them. And they're shooting, you know, one inch, one and a half, two, two inch groups at 20 yards, right? When I walk up on the range with them, I'm not trying to brag, and I shoot my hunting bow, hunting setup, and I'm shooting the same two, two and a half inch group out. They all give, look at me with, with a drop jaw, like how the hell did I do that? And I got all this fancy stuff on. It's very simple, it's consistency. I don't need all that fancy gear on my bow. I have nothing on my bow. I have no sights on my bow, no stabilizer. It's a bare bow. And I shoot just like I shoot, uh, just like I throw a baseball. I was very active younger when I was a kid playing sports. I played basketball, I played baseball, I played football. I was a quarterback for my football team. I was a, I was a pitcher for my baseball team, and I was a forward for my um, basketball team. 
And all those, you got to know your distances and focus on your target to hit it, okay? Whether you be throwing a football, pitching a baseball, or shooting for three points. And just shooting a bow is no different than throwing a baseball. It really isn't. You just got to be consistent with it and learn to do that, okay? Your mind and your body can do it. Don't, think, don't tell yourself you can't. But you have to train yourself to do it. Okay? So, with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Okay? I want to do me a favor. If you like this video, please click that like button. And also click that um, that bell next to that like button for me. That way I can notify upcoming videos. There's a bunch of videos coming out on my Patreon channel and my YouTube channel. I got some hunting videos going on my Patreon channel, so you're not a member yet. Log over to my Patreon channel, sign up, and check out some of those hunting videos. I also want to thank Handy for sending me the string. Thank you, Handy. Good string. Got it on my Bear Stag Hunter bow. Good shooting string. I appreciate it. Also, the velocity with this string, it's about 179, 180 feet per second. I tried to have that in the video, but my um, corner graph died on me. I guess the battery went dead, so that's what it was shooting. So it shoots the same thing as, say, a factory string does, all right? All right, well, that's been it. That's been my style of assistance. Remember those four factors I told you? You want to tune your arrows to your bow. You want to get your anchor point and your release down consistently. You want, and then you want to shoot both eyes open. Find your dominant eye and shoot your dominant eye bow, whether it be right or left-handed. And last, get some string time in and practice. Practice, practice, practice. All I can tell you. All right, all right, guys. I want to thank you. Until next time. Ciao.